This question is about the fractions obtained from crude oil. Crude oil is separated into fractions by fractional distillation. The fractions obtained from crude oil include lubricating oil, naphtha and petroleum gases. And table one shows the boiling point ranges of these fractions. Crude oil is a mixture of hydrocarbons, which are molecules made from only hydrogen and carbon. These hydrocarbons vary dramatically in length. The very long hydrocarbons have got a higher boiling point than the shorter hydrocarbons. And when we separate them out using fractional distillation, we don't separate them out entirely. We separate them out into groups of similar length hydrocarbons, which are referred to as fractions. And we can tell that it's not totally pure because the boiling points have got a range. And so we are asked to explain how these fractions are obtained from crude oil by fractional distillation. And there are four marks for this question, so we need to make sure we give a well-developed answer that refers to the fractions and the data in the table. The first step of fractional distillation is where the crude oil is introduced to a boiler. At this point, the crude oil is heated until it vaporizes. When it goes in, it's normally a liquid, and in this stage here, it turns from a liquid into a gas. And then the vapors move through and into this, which is called the fractionating column. It's a big, big tower with lots of lots of different levels. Now, once it enters the tower, these vapors start to rise up the column. Now, this column is hotter at the bottom and colder at the top. So as the vapors move away from the bottom of the column, they will cool down. And when vapors cool down, they condense. And that means they'll turn back from a gas into a liquid. Now, the subtlety for this question here is it asks how these fractions are obtained from crude oil by fractional distillation. So we need to link it to these three named fractions. Now, since the vapors are going to condense as they rise up, we need to think about where they will condense. And they'll condense at the level of their boiling point. And the lubricating oil has got the highest boiling point. That means it needs to be hotter to keep lubricating oil as a vapor than it does for the other two. And so the lubricating oil will condense first. That means it will condense lower down than the other two, because if it's, say, 450 degrees C at the bottom, as it rises to here, it will condense and then it will come out at this stage at about 300 to 350 degrees C. The naphtha will condense next out of these three because its boiling point is the next lowest, and the petroleum gas will either condense at this level or possibly even not even condense at all because it will have the lowest point of all. And so the petroleum gases are actually unlikely to condense in this column. And so how do we make sure that we get all four of these marks? Well, first of all, we need to say that the crude oil is heated to make it vaporize or to make it evaporate. And then when it enters the fractionating column, it will rise up and it will cool down because it is cooler at the top than it is at the bottom. And then these vapors will condense at different levels. And we can be specific and say that the lubricating oil will condense lower down than naphtha and they condense at these different levels because they have got different boiling points. The longer hydrocarbons have got higher boiling points, and that would be lubricating oil out of this trio of different fractions. And petroleum gases have the lowest boiling point of the three, and that's because their hydrocarbon molecules must be smaller. You don't have to use all of these precise words that I've written down here, but there are a certain number of words that you really should try and include in an answer like this. For instance, you need to talk about the crude oil vaporizing or evaporating. You need to refer to the actual fractionating column or tower by name. And then you need to talk about the gases condensing and you need to use the phrase different boiling points. If you want, you could support your answer with a diagram. That would mean that you would need to write less descriptions because your diagram would cover some of the same details. 
Fractions from crude oil can be processed to produce feedstock for the petrochemical industry. Which two are useful materials produced from this feedstock? And that's what feedstock is. It goes into a second set of processors and the crude oil fractions get converted into new substances that have got new uses. And we're told that we need to tick two boxes, and that's because there are two marks up for grabs here. Now, we need to remember that crude oil is a mixture of hydrocarbons, and these are covalent molecules containing only carbon and hydrogen atoms. And so alloys, the first answer, is definitely wrong because alloys are made from metals with other substances added in that might not be metals, but we definitely need metals for it to be an alloy. And ceramics? Well, ceramics include things such as glass and clay and pottery. And so whilst that seems like it could maybe be reasonable, it isn't. You don't use crude oil to make pottery and glass. Detergents. This is one of the correct answers. Detergents are cleaning products, and that's one of the things that you can convert the fractions from crude oil into. Fertilisers. This is not the correct answer. Fertilisers are things that help plants to grow, help crops to grow, and you don't put crude oil or anything derived from crude oil directly onto fields. That wouldn't help the plants grow. The, the fertilisers need to contain things such as nitrogen and phosphorus and potassium to help those plants grow, not carbon and hydrogen that you get in hydrocarbons. And that means that the last answer, solvents, must be the second correct answer, and it is. Solvents are used to dissolve things, and the fractions of crude oil are really good at dissolving a certain type of substance, specifically substances that do not readily dissolve in water. So the correct answers are detergents and solvents.